Welcome and welcome back to my channel. My name is Natea and this is Nesthetics, bringing you content that is aesthetic, authentic, and all about activism. So today we are talking about Lakeith Stanfield and his need to go to therapy after his role as William O'Neill in his recent film, Judas and the Black Messiah. So I personally watched this film and I enjoyed it. I watched it twice because I plan on writing a review or filming a review for YouTube about my thoughts on the film but I really enjoyed the film and like immediately after I watched it I actually thought like I wondered if Lakeith needed therapy because if you watch the film and you know about his character that he played William O'Neill you know that that character like I don't know, I feel like that would be a rough character to play because it's like this man worked for the FBI and he went against his own people and then in the end he was interviewed and then he commuted, committed suicide and all that afterwards. And I, I didn't know all of these facts before watching the movie so when I like watched to the end and I uh, saw the fact that William O'Neill committed suicide, um, you know a day or that same day after his interview I was like wow that's like very saddening but also when I heard that Lakeith got therapy I also immediately thought about Michael B Jordan because also in his role in Black Panther as Killmonger he also stated that he needed therapy after his um role as well and he played that role very well I think that is very telling that these actors really go to high measures to make sure that they really become these roles and really do what they can to portray these roles in the best way and really do the best job that they can so that they can entertain us i mean i i don't know it's it's so it's kind of sad in a way but it's like that's kind of what acting is and i'm just happy that lakeith did get therapy and did decide decide to do it because some people especially us black folks don't always immediately recognize that we need therapy or that that it's something that we should consider i think that in my personal opinion that black women and just speaking about black folks you know just speaking about black folks right now i personally think that black women are more open to getting therapy based on what i've seen and experienced than black men and that's understandable because like there's hyper masculinity there's a stigma and like therapy you know, black men might see it as like weak or might see it as like, you know, having to display their emotions, which comes from hyper masculinity. But I feel like all black people, we all need therapy. I'm really happy that Lakeith was open about his, him going to therapy after his role. He said that he should have started it before he started the role or like, had therapy throughout the role but like now he recognizes that if he's gonna go into a role like this then he's probably he probably should start therapy before instead of after so I'm gonna let you all watch the clip where he talks about uh his therapy and like why he decided to go I understand that you know actors like yourself and Daniel you guys really dive deep into your process especially getting into character and all and I'm just kind of wondering like you know, how are you, you know, how are you, how's your process after all of this and what are you doing to take care of yourself? Thanks for asking that. That uh, makes me a little emotional because <laughs> no one has even um, asked about that. And, you know, I, I definitely came out of this role immediately needing therapy and needing to get through things. And I, I think going into them in the future, I will definitely employ that before I dive in. As you say, like we go 110 percent without sometimes thinking about self-care and it's important. And, you know, I, it, it does have an effect. Um, there were times on set where my hands just went completely numb. There were times where I had existential crises and panic attacks and I had to run off, run out of the trailer and just not knowing if I was doing the right thing, even by playing this character. It was a big it felt like it would be a big stigma on me personally, even having to take on a character like this. So. Um, I think it helps to have people that can guide you and who understand psychology and, and emotional alchemy and navigating those things in order to help you out. And so and now that I have a therapist, it's been much better. But, um, yeah, thanks for asking that, man. I'm doing much better. Um, 
But yeah, it was hard. It, uh, I had um, alopecia that was in re remission that came back as a result of the stress associated with it. So, you know, you gotta sometimes be careful and, and, and manage yourself a bit. So I appreciate that, thanks. I think that more black people should consider going to therapy, black people in general, um, because I feel like we have so much trauma and we have so much that we've experienced, like multi-generational trauma and then the institutionalized racism, also known as post-traumatic slave syndrome. I say this all the time. I talk about post-traumatic slave syndrome all the time. Um, but I feel like because of that, we really need to work through those traumas and work through, on top of that, we are, we got like daily life trauma. We got trauma from our families. We got trauma from school. We got trauma from whatever, whatever, whatever experiences we growing up, we had growing up. <laughs> we all have some sort of trauma and battles that we're facing. And I feel like we should all consider therapy at least. I will say therapy is not for everyone, but I feel like everyone should at least try it. I know I personally have tried it and I'm still in therapy. I'll give y'all a little bit of a story time about me right now. So I personally started going to therapy in college when I was a sophomore slash junior in college. I started going to therapy. I wasn't going very regularly. I went through my college, so it was, you know, free. You know, I was still paying for it through my tuition, but it was free to go to these sessions. And I think at my school, you were able to get like three sessions um, a month or something like that. I can't remember. But for me, I only went to therapy like once a month um, during the school years, between sophomore and junior year. Senior year, I don't remember as much going to therapy i think i might have went one time or two times but i really didn't go that much i only went though because of some stresses that i was having in school problems with relationships that i was having with you know people in school or like roommates stuff like that that's what i would go to therapy for at my college but then as i got older not older but like just post-college like i decided to go to therapy and actually start like therapy at from an actual like therapist outside of the school so I had really good experiences going to therapy even though my therapists weren't black or people of color at my college I had a really good experience going to therapy and it was very like releasing which I liked so post-college I decided to go to therapy and I really feel like I went to therapy for the wrong reasons but I'm still in therapy for the right reasons so I went to therapy originally because, or first of all, so I started I started therapy in July of 2020. So it hasn't even been a year of me going to post-college therapy. Because I feel like post-college therapy, when you're going to an actual therapist that's out here in the world, like it's, I feel like it's a little bit different than the school therapy. Because for me, like I go bi-weekly now. And for school, like you can pop in whenever you want. It wasn't regular. It was kind of like, you know, pop in when you feel like you kind of need it. And if you feel like, if we feel like you need more, like the, the therapist at the school feel like you need more, then we'll get you like a therapist outside the school. So I started going to therapy because I felt inadequate. I felt like I wasn't enough. I felt like I was a toxic person. I thought that, you know, something was wrong with me basically but i'm in therapy now because i'm healing and i want to work on my toxic traits and i want to become a better person i really want to work on myself and become the best version of me i feel like we all should be working to become the best versions of ourselves and that's what i'm really trying to do right now so for me i'm in therapy now because i'm healing from past experiences call it trauma or or not past experiences healing from different things that i'm going through internally and then also just like working on my toxic traits and just because you have toxic traits does not mean that you are a toxic person i feel like we all have toxic traits that we have to work on some of us are stubborn some of us are jealous some of us are envious some of us don't know how to communicate me me right here okay i'm gonna call myself out Sometimes I don't know how to communicate. Even if I'm like talking to a camera within my relationship, sometimes I don't know how to communicate effectively. 
And that's something I had to work on and I'm still working on. Some of us, you know, are selfish, don't listen to others. Like we we got see, I'm talking to some I'm talking to some of y'all. I know I'm talking to some of y'all. Y'all, I'm I'm listing off these traits and you like that's me. That's me. And that's what I'm saying. We all have these like I guess quote unquote I call them toxic traits because like these traits can like affect people and things in our lives some of these traits are the things that are holding us back from success okay and it's like we gotta work on those things you can't be wanting to be successful but you envious of the next person and you jealous and you don't want them to have that but you want to have it like how you expect to be successful and you over here jealous and you over here praying on people downfall like it don't work like that so it's like for me personally I feel like we all should work on our toxic traits and that's what I'm doing in therapy and also outside of therapy and plus therapy like you don't have to go to therapy to work on this stuff but that is my decision and plus if you go to therapy and you don't do the work outside of therapy therapy is going to be ineffective and that's just like anything else like even if you don't decide to go to therapy there's so much free information out here YouTube podcasts you know social media like there's so much free information out here where you can work on these skills and work on these toxic traits of yours without having to go to therapy but if you just watching youtube videos and listening to podcasts like i like to listen to podcasts about self-love and healing and stuff like that but if i'm just listening to these podcasts and i'm not doing anything to help with my self-love and to love myself i'm not taking any action steps then I'm just sitting here listening to the podcast. I'm just sitting here watching the videos. I'm retaining the information, but I'm not taking any actions. So me personally, I like to do both, but that's just me. I'm really not sure how long I'll stay in therapy. And I kind of wonder how long like Lakeith will stay in therapy or he'll feel like he, he needs it. And also I wonder how long Michael B. Jordan stayed in therapy and if he's still in therapy, you know. So in therapy, like I... I feel like, you know, you you do it when you need it, as long as you need it. And I feel like in a year, well, when the year comes, like in July 2021, I'm going to reflect and, and see like how far I've come. Do I feel like I still need therapy? Do I want to keep going with it? And also for me, like I'll probably have to change therapists um, at the end of this year anyways, or not the end, but in July, because I'll most likely be moving out of my home state and that's where my therapist practice so you know there's a lot of different factors but for me like choosing a therapist like I feel like I got really lucky and you have to find the right therapist for you like you have to find the right fit and I'm going to list a lot of different resources in the description box of how you can find therapists in your area there's a lot of resources that I found for marginalized groups and people of color and black folks specifically too and for me you know i have a black woman therapist okay i wasn't mm -mm, i wasn't finna play about that okay i have a black woman therapist because i felt like i could only be like myself and free if i had a black woman therapist as someone to go to so i really love having that connection and love seeing that i can go to someone that looks like me and understands my plight as a black person how I found my therapist is through psychology today. So I just looked through like my at my location and looked through the therapists that were near me. And I dwindled it down to four black women therapists that I found. I read their descriptions because they have a description of like what they specialize in. And I was like, okay, I really like what she specializes in, you know, her, her, her. So I'm going to call these four therapists and see what's up. And also they show you and tell you like how much they cost and how much uh or like what insurance they take as well my therapist personally does not take my insurance but I feel like I, I really got lucky um I only pay $50 a session so I only pay $100 a month for therapy which is not bad at all um, but when you go on the website, you will see, cause I remember at first, one of the therapists I called, she was like, yeah, it's $250 a session. I said, Oh, I cannot afford that. I cannot afford that. So I will say like therapy, it, it can be inaccessible. 
it can be expensive everybody cannot afford it and that's why i want to put these resources in the description box not just resources for therapy but also social media outlets that you can follow that'll help you with your healing journey if you don't even want to go to therapy you can't afford it or you want to try to do the work on your own for the time being if you don't want to consider therapy so make sure y'all definitely check out the description box for that but overall i'm really happy that lakeith is going to therapy I think that that is a huge step and a big step that we should all learn from, especially as black folks and as people are part of the POC or the BIPOC community, because there is definitely a big stigma in our communities about therapy. And we need to eliminate that stigma because it's nothing wrong with going to therapy at all. It's nothing wrong with expressing your emotions and how you feel. So... I feel like there's some things, like I said, that we all need to work through. Some of us, you know, we didn't experience things in our childhood that we don't even recognize impacts us today. And like in, in therapy, you will learn so much more about yourself. Like I have discovered so much more about myself through therapy and recognizing things in my past, like my childhood that have impacted me and still like affect how i am today and working through those things like we are such complex people like the smallest thing could still affect us today it could be a teacher or something that did something to you like said something to you and disregarded you or whatever like in middle school that could still stick with you today and that can affect like your self-esteem and how you feel about school and how you feel about your success in school like it's little stuff. It's little stuff. And one exercise my therapist told me to do in a session, and I'll tell y'all this because I feel like everybody should do this exercise. So basically, think about the very first memory that you have right now as a child. So what's your very first memory? You know, um, my memory right now is like riding a bike in my driveway with my sister pushing me in the, in the driveway. I think it was like a little, some little, little bike. So that's the first memory I have of my childhood in my head. And then from then on, list every memory after that memory, right after that one, list everyone that you remember until present day. So it's going to be a long timeline of a whole bunch of memories you have from your first childhood memory to your last memory, present day. And when I did this exercise, I tell y'all, I got triggered by so many different memories that I didn't even think about. But then I started thinking about when I was writing. Because, like, when you just start writing, you'll be like, oh, yeah, I remember that. I remember that, too. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Like, you just start thinking about a whole bunch of stuff. And, like, some of those memories will be triggering. And I was not uh, expecting some of these memories to be trigger triggering. Because it was, like, one memory from my childhood that I was, like... I didn't even I don't even think about this on a daily basis. I ain't thought about this in years, but now all of a sudden I'm doing this exercise and I'm triggered by it. So like in my last video, I said that I would be doing action items from now on since my channel is about activism. I'm like, okay, I feel like I should be giving action items at the end of my videos as well. And if you haven't watched my last video and saw where I got the inspiration for action items, I'm going to need you to go to watch watch that video. I'm going to need you to go watch that video, okay? After this one, I'm going to need you to go watch the video. So I have three action items for you all today. And the first action item is to self-reflect. You know, we talked about tox toxic traits today. What are some of your toxic traits what are some things that you want to work on within yourself internally? What are your, some things you feel like are holding you back from whatever you got going on? I want you to do some self-reflection, self-discovery. Ask yourself these questions like, you know, what are my toxic traits? What do I need to work on? How do I want to become a better version of myself? These are very open-ended questions, but I want you to do some self-reflection, okay? Because I feel like en enough of us don't, don't self-reflect. We don't sit here alone and self-reflect enough. And it's very important. I've been doing a lot of self-reflection and it's been so good. I've been spending a lot of time alone. I actually took myself out on a date the other night. Wonderful. Got Cuban food. Okay, anyways. But do some self-reflection. And like even me, I took myself out on a date. 
I took my journal with me because I ain't talking to nobody while I'm on the date because I'm by myself. So I took my journal with me to write while I was eating, while I was having my drinks, you know, all of that. So action item number one, self-reflect. Action item number two, you guessed it, seek therapy. And I'm not saying like you have to go to therapy, but like check it out, okay? Psychology Today and the other resources that I put in the description box, check them out you know seek seek it check it out see what it what it's about you know see what kind of therapists are in your area what they specialize in see if you see anything you like kind of like window shopping away you know you you not you might not buy buy it but you gonna window shop y'all should definitely buy my merch though okay can y'all see it y'all see it? okay i'm gonna need y'all not to window shop on this merch i'm gonna need y'all to buy that but you know, seek therapy, see what's out there, see if you want to consider it, even call around if you want to, like call around to some of the therapists like I did, see, you, and you get a feel for their energy too, because the lady that said she was charging $250, I was not feeling her energy at all on the phone. The way she answered the phone, I was like, oh no, this therapist is not for me. So I encourage you all to, you know, check out what resources are available to you near you and especially if you have um if you're in school you're in college check out your your counseling center see what kind of therapists are there see if they got therapists of color you know just check it out check it out that's all i'm saying is check it out and the last action item is to make a list of things that you would like to improve on within yourself like for me some things that i'm working on right now is just like self-love loving myself a lot more communication, trying to become a better communicator within my relationships, and just also embodying the the traits that I want like in a partner. So I feel like I I've written down like the different traits that I want in a partner, okay? And I'm like how can I want a partner with these traits and not have these traits myself? So one of those things is like empathy. And I really feel like having someone who is empathetic is important to me. So I'm like, I need to work on my empathy as well. Reflected on past relationships where I haven't been as empathetic and could have been more empathetic. You know, so make a list of some traits and some things you want to work on. Some of us might want to work on vulnerability. Like for me, I'm working on that every day. I feel like I've become a lot more vulnerable. Some of us, you know, don't like to express our emotions. Some of us, that makes us kind of nervous to express our emotions and be vulnerable with other people. But maybe if that's on your list, then you can be like, okay, this is how I'm going to try to be vulnerable. Maybe once a week, I'm going to do something that is outside of my comfort zone and be vulnerable with this person or that person or whatever so you know make that list and then make an action action steps after that list so for me like with the self-love so maybe self-love might be like looking at myself in the mirror naked or something like you know if I say that I want to work on self-love then that'll be my action item if I say I want to work on self-love, maybe I'll write some self-love affirmations and repeat them to myself in the mirror every morning while I'm brushing my teeth. So it's like, okay, make the list, make the actions. So yeah, that's all I have for y'all today. Those are your action items. I hope they go well. Let me know if y'all decide to do any of these action items. You know, leave a comment in the comment section below. Your thoughts about this video. Your thoughts about Lakeith going to therapy. Your thoughts about... BIPOC communities going to therapy in general. I hope y'all enjoyed this video. I will see y'all in my next one. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you're not already. And also don't forget to buy your revolutionary merch, okay? Y'all gonna see me wearing this hoodie all the time now, okay? Be promoting this hoodie all the time. But don't forget to buy your merch either. Um, and follow me on social media if you like. And I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye. I know y'all couldn't see the merch before, but because of you know the camera was only up here. But I'm gonna let y'all you know see it a little bit more now. Okay, Huey. Okay. Do you see him? Do you see him? Do you see Huey? Okay. I'm gonna need y'all to go buy y'all merch. Stop playing with me.